story of Adamson Mushala. This is a story that comes from Zambia in Southern Africa. It is about a man who leads a rebellion against the government of the Republic of Zambia from 1976 to 1982. Who was Adamson Mushala? Before Northern Rhodesia, which is now Zambia, became independent from the British, Adamson Mushala was very active in the fight for the independence of the country. He was part of the leadership of the United National Independence Party, UNIP, led by Kenneth Kaunda. And Zambia became independent from the British on 24th October 1964. The president of this new nation was Kenneth Kaunda. It is said that after independence, Adamson Mushala approached the president, requesting that he be included in the leadership of the country. Him being a game ranger in his career, requested that he be appointed as the chief game ranger or as the minister of tourism and wildlife. Kenneth Kaunda turns him down and Mushala is not a happy man. He was disgruntled and later left in Ip to join another party called the United Party, led by Nalumino Mundia. He was now in opposition against UNIP. His activities against UNIP landed him in great trouble and at one time he is detained for months in Kinsali. In the month of December of 1972, the political climate changes in Zambia. Kenneth Kaunda declares the country as a one-party state. This means that all the other political parties were no longer recognized apart from the ruling party UNIP. And during elections, at the time of voting, on the ballot paper, one would say yes for Kenneth Kaunda, but if one had an alternative choice, he or she would vote on the image of the frog on the ballot paper. This move does not please many people, and Adamson Mushala is one of them who does not like this one-party state. So, in the year of 1972, in December, Adamson Mushala places his family, that is his wife Rejoice, and their five children into a brand new Land Rover 109 and drives off, crossing the border into Angola. Adamson Mushala flees the country, and during the years that followed, he planned the rebellion against the government of the Republic of Zambia. At some point before 1976, he moved his family from Rwanda in Angola to South Africa. And at the time of leaving South Africa for Zambia in 1976, his family was being looked after by his well-wishers. So as mentioned, Mushala leaves his family in 1976 and heads for Zambia. His wife says that that was the last time she ever saw him. He arrives in the northwestern province of Zambia. This is his home territory among the Kaunde people. It is in this region that he launched and led a guerrilla war from 1976 to 1982. The Zambian authorities in the initial stages started receiving reports of armed robberies and shootouts with local police. There were also reports of villages being burnt and the school being broken into. Mushala and his guerrilla army were first in Mufumbwe before moving into the dense forest of Muluwanshika, situated north of Kafue National Park. In this insurgency, Mushala led an army of over 200 guerrilla soldiers who engaged in a battle with the Zambian army. For both sides, there were casualties and there was instability in the northwestern province of Zambia. There are stories that Mushala was not only armed with guns, but also practiced magic. There are many stories about witchcraft that surrounded him. In November of 1979, Rejoice, the wife of Mushala, decided to return to Zambia. She made this decision even when she was at risk of being arrested by the Zambian authorities. 
but she wanted to return to her home country. So she and her children were driven to the border between Namibia and Angola by South African soldiers. She then sets off walking with her family for days in the bush towards Zambia. She narrates that they even ran out of food and ended up depending on wild fruits. They finally reached Shangombo in the western province of Zambia. Arriving there, they handed themselves over to the police. Rejoice was detained and she was taken to Senanga. Then Ilai and finally to Kawamba, where she lived under house arrest. She was later released in 1984 and she returned to settle in Mufumwe. On the war front, Mushala knew his territory very well, such that the Zambia army struggled to end this fighting. They failed to capture him. However, there is a breakthrough in November of 1982 when Mushala is finally ambushed and killed in the remote bushes of Northwestern Province. His body is taken to Solwezi and it's paraded for everyone to see. Adam's son Mushala, who had led a rebellion against the Zambian government and initiated terror, was now no more. After Mushala's death, his second in command, Saimwende, took over the leadership of this guerrilla army. However, it is said that more soldiers in this army started leaving and going back to their villages at the loss of their leader. So, the Mushala army was reduced to a gang of outlaws. Saimwende eventually surrenders himself to the authorities in 1990. In this same year, that is mid-1990, the president, Kenneth Kaunda, accepted to return the country to a multi-party system. So Zambia once again became a multi-party democratic nation.